Hello, my name is Vincent, and these are some of the modifications I made on my Astus 20.2S trimmer. They yielded 15 to 25% increase in performance depending on wing strength. They also added quite a bit of comfort and convenience while sailing and living on board for minimal weight gain. Some of those modifications you can find in other videos on the internet. Some are a bit more unique, so I hope you enjoy them, and feel free to comment if you have any suggestions. So we are going to start with the front of the boat and work on, on our way back. Uh, a few things to notice in the front. Um, first, um, the bowsprit was replaced with the 100% carbon fiber bowsprit, uh, which is a considerably longer than the previous one, as you can probably see, about two feet longer. Um, with this bowsprit, I added some rigging, horizontal rigging, um, to be able to take the uh, side load. Uh, the other thing that uh, we added was um, this little uh, downhole tensioning device that you see in the front, which gives you a 2 to one purchase, um, and that is uh, pretty useful in two different fashions. Number one, as I change bow, bow sprit quite a bit between my cruising and my racing bow sprit, I don't have to uh, readdress the loop all the time. Um, the second piece is that um, as you um, put the uh, forestay for the Ginnaker or the, or the uh, um, furling Spinnaker on the front, um, the halyard is really a one-to-one -one purchase on the mast and having a two-to-one -one purchase at the bottom allows you to put a little bit more tension, which is uh, nice for furling and unfurling. Uh, moving back a little bit, uh, because of the much more powerful uh, bowsprit, I added a Dyneema brace in the front right here. Uh, which is basically uh, secured on the flange of the boat, which is very, very solid. So a little bit more effort on the um, cover requires a little bit of safety here. The other thing that I did is um, drill additional holes and put another dynamite line right here, um, which allows me basically to spread the load for the forestay, for, that's the uh, structural forestay that holds the mast and the jib which has this pad eye here originally and now has basically three anchor points um, on the flange. Okay. Uh, another thing to note down is uh, I changed the um, furler uh, to a pro furl furler, uh, which has a one more inch in diameter. Uh, what I like about the pro furl furler is that it has a top quick release, which allows me to change um, downwind sails between the Ginnaker and the Spinnaker. Um, without having to uh, change the cage. And that's, that's quite handy when you do that while sailing. It also saves you a, 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 an extra furler to buy and to carry on board. So that all works um, very well. Uh, four inch diameter, very, very good for furling. Uh, you get a lot of power out of, that, out of that, even for our small sails. Okay, moving back a little bit. Um, one of my favorites really for cruising. And uh, under the cover for the front compartment, um, I added a deck panel. And so when you're anchored, basically uh, in the Florida summers, it can be quite hot. And um, so that you don't get uh, too much stuffiness inside when you sleep. Uh, you when you anchor the boat, you can basically hang the front cover that I'm um, actioning here. Um, you hang it from the spinnaker halyard and you open this deck panel and it acts like a giant air scoop um, which makes the interior of the cabin quite comfortable. Okay, moving back a little bit more. Um, this is one of the main modifications I did on the boat and that is basically making it a lot wider. I believe, if out of memory, the boat is 4.25 meter wide and my boat is now 4.66 meter wide. And in order to do that, I changed these tubes right here. Uh, I changed the aluminum grade from uh, um, the original grade to be 6061T6, which is the highest grade. And um, I got about 20% more resistance. In addition, I um, increased the thickness from three to five millimeter, which allows to, um, to get a lot more load on the beam without having to put some barber hauler at the, at the bottom. Um, the other thing I had to manufacture, you probably can see it here, is the sliding pad. So the sliding pad here is um, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. 
And um, this is a pretty nifty material. You see the other pad here sticking out from the other AMA that is retracted. Um, UHMLW is, um, is um, very resistant in compression and very slippery. Uh, so excellent material to make a pressure pad um, or a static bearing. The problem with it is that it doesn't stick to anything, but I found on Amazon some sheets of that um, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene that uh, were compatibilized on one side with acrylic. And acrylic has fancy um, property is that it sticks to a lot of stuff. So basically I bonded it to the uh, sliding tube, uh, paying very attention about the bonding thickness so that the diameter of the inner tube to the outer to the sliding tube uh, matched very well and had the right tolerancing so that it slid but wasn't too loose. And um, basically, well, it's uh, relatively easy easy to do. It's very time consuming, but um, it's not very difficult as long as you have the right materials. Okay, and that puts the boat to be a lot wider and it makes the boat a lot faster. Okay, now we're going to move in the cockpit. Uh, a few modifications in the cockpit, some very simple ones. Uh, here at the bottom, I added a cleat on the up rope for the center board. Um, it's useful in Florida because we sail in some areas that have very shallow waters, and then, so that allows me to cleat the center board um, in an oblique position. Um, and you'll see how it works with the rudder in the back. Um, and basically, it's a little bit better because normally when you hit a sandbank or something, the rudder board goes up completely. And uh, that can be a little bit of a challenge to maneuver the boat once you lose the whole rudder board. When it's inclined for shallow waters, it's a lot easier to maneuver. This is very simple. This is my nav um, um, post. And so I basically clip my um, smartphone on this and I have a sailing software on it that has maps and I, I use the phone GPS. It's ultra simple, it works ultra well. Um, I recommend it, okay? A few other modifications. Um, you can see here in the back, I changed the clamp cleat for the spinnaker to ones that are on turrets. I found that it was a lot easier to control the spinnaker like that because um, you basically can change the angle at which you pull the rope when you, you sit in different positions in the cockpit. Okay, a couple of other things. I added on the back of the boom a 221 purchase, which allows me to sheet in and out the outhaul of the mainsail while sailing. Uh, which is very useful um, when the wind changes or when you're racing where you have to change your outhaul every time you turn the corner. Okay, a couple of other things. Um, <clears throat> this is my rotor attachment. Uh, it keeps the rotor in line when I maneuver the boat. This is not the original rudder. It is a Dotan rudder. It's very light. Um, it's a very interesting actuation mechanism because you actuate the rudder by lifting the tiller right here. So I'm going to unclead it and basically do this. Rudder goes down, do this, rudder goes up. Um, the rudder is also a very shallow blade compared to the original one, which again in Florida is um, very useful uh, be because it allows you to really go into areas where you get a lot of sandbanks and, and you're in a much lower risk to run aground. Um, also where I put the boat uh, in the water, I have a, a shallow area to come out and if I want to sail out, I have to have the sharp rudder. Uh, very useful. Okay, we are now going to move to the side of the boat. This is a little cleat here. I've seen that on many other uh, videos and pictures of Astus. Nothing fancy, but quite useful. Um, now we're going to move inside the cabin. A few things that uh, were done inside the cabin. Uh, number one, right here, uh, I added basically um, pressure plates that I laminated out of Balzacor sandwich and this very deep C clamp. And what it does is that it clamps the uh, center board when you're racing. Um, it clamps it down and it makes the side wall of the center board well a lot more rigid and um, it actually makes the boat significantly more nervous at every time you hit a wave or a gust. Very, uh, very useful. Um, other thing that's more creature comfort, so I didn't put all of it in there, but I've made a basically um, 
flat surface that goes all the way from here to the end and I made it in three sections so that it could be stored underneath the cockpit easily. Um, this is one of the sections that goes all the way back to the cockpit wall and when you, and basically it goes here and here and it leaves a little hole here which allows two people to sit very comfortably staggered so you would have one head, one head uh, here and then another person with their head over here and basically you get the shoulders um, staggered, you get the hips staggered, it gives a lot more room in the boat to sleep comfortably with uh, two people. I do that regularly with uh, my children and they really love it, it's a, uh, really added to, uh, to our comfort overnight. Okay, uh, a couple of other things uh, inside, um, some very very easy trick. Um, this is a clamp, um, a hook that really you find at any supermarket that's a couple of dollars. Um, it's, it holds up to seven or eight pounds, it's cheap, it's efficient, uh, nothing, it's not bolted in and the adhesive can be sheared off the wall so if you decide to put it somewhere else you leave no trace on your boat. It's desirable. Uh, last uh, little item that uh, we're going to look at is uh, here my little coat hanger, again super simple. Um, just epoxied it with ding stick, I've had it for a couple of years now, works great, allows you to hang the live jacket, some of the safety equipments, or if you have any additional activities um, that are connected to your boat that you need to hang in there, um, it works really well. Um, finally, this little plate right here that uh, I left in place, I sometimes leave it in navigation, um, where basically it gives you a nice flat surface to put extra stuff without um, the stuff falling at the bottom of the boat. Um, if you have, you know, a cooler or if you have uh, some extra um, uh, docking equipment that you need to be able to keep handy, um, it's a lot easier to uh, grab from that surface than from the bottom. So there you go. Uh, that's a bit of a review of some of the modifications that were done on this boat. Uh, again, a lot of them I've seen in the past uh, in some pictures and videos, but hopefully uh, some of you learned um, or had ideas to do uh, additional items on this really fantastic little boat that works very well and has a lot of range. And so I uh, hope everybody have a nice day and uh, hopefully see you on the water.